Gertrude Caroline Ederly October 23, 1905 to November 30, 2003, was an American competition swimmer, Olympic champion, and former world record holder in five events. On August 6, 1926, she became the first woman to swim across the English Channel. Among other nicknames, the press sometimes called her Queen of the Waves. Topic: <laughs> Early Years. Gertrude Ederly was born on October 23, 1905 in Manhattan, New York City. She was the third of six children and the daughter of German immigrants, Gertrude Anna Haberstroh and Henry Ederly. According to a biography of Ederly, America's Girl, her father ran a butcher shop on Amsterdam Avenue in Manhattan. Her father taught her to swim in Highlands, New Jersey, where the family owned a summer cottage. Amateur career Ederly trained at the Women's Swimming Association WSA, which produced such competitors as Athelda Bleibtree, Charlotte Boyle, Helen Wainwright, Aileen Riggin, Eleanor Holm and Esther Williams. Her yearly dues of $3 allowed Trudy to swim at the tiny Manhattan indoor pool. But, according to America's Girl, the WSA was already the center of competitive swimming, a sport that was becoming increasingly popular with the evolution of a bathing suit that made it easier to get through the water." The director, Charlotte Epi Epstein, had already urged the AAU to endorse women's swimming as a sport in 1917 and in 1919 pressured the AAU to "...allow swimmers to remove their stockings for competition as long as they quickly put on a robe once they got out of the water." That wasn't the only advantage of belonging to the WSA. The American Crawl, a variation of the Australian Crawl, was developed at the WSA by Lewis Handley, according to America's Girl. Handley thought the Australian Crawl, in which swimmers did three kicks and then turned on their side to take a breath and do a scissors kick, could be improved. The finished product, and its eight-beat variation, which Ederly would use, became the American Crawl, and Handley was its proud father." Along with Handley, Epstein made New York female swimmers a force to be reckoned with. Ederly joined the club when she was only 12. The same year, she set her first world record in the 880-yard freestyle, becoming the youngest world record holder in swimming. She set eight more world records after that, seven of them in 1922 at Brighton Beach. In total, Ederly held 29 U.S. national and world records from 1921 until 1925. At the 1924 Summer Olympics in Paris, Ederly won a gold medal as a member of the first place U.S. team in the 4x100 meter freestyle relay. Together with her American relay teammates Euphrasia Donnelly, Ethel Lackey and Marietchen Wesselau, she set a new world record of 4 minutes 58 seconds and 8 milliseconds in the event final. Individually, she received bronze medals for finishing third in the women's 100m freestyle and women's 400m freestyle races. Trudy had been favored to win a gold in all three events and would later say her failure to win three golds in the Games was the biggest disappointment of her career. Still, she was proud to have been a part of the American team that brought home 99 medals from the Paris Olympics. It was an illustrious Olympic team, swimmer Johnny Weismuller, oarsman Benjamin Spock, tennis player Helen Wills, and long jumper Dehart Hubbard, who, according to America's Girl, was the first black man to win an individual gold. The U.S. Olympic team had its own ticker tape parade in 1924. Professional career In 1925, Ederly turned professional. The same year she swam the 22 miles from Battery Park to Sandy Hook in 7 hours and 11 minutes, a record time which stood for 81 years before being broken by Australian swimmer Tammy Van Wees. Ederly's nephew Bob later described his aunt's swim as a midnight frolic and a warm-up. For her later swim across the English Channel, the Women's Swimming Association sponsored Helen Wainwright and Trudy for an attempt at swimming the channel. Helen Wainwright pulled out at the last minute because of an injury, but Trudy decided to go to France on her own. She trained with Jabba's Wolf, a swimmer who had attempted to swim the channel 22 times. During the training, Wolf continually tried to slow Trudy's pace, saying that she would never last at that speed. 
The training with Wolf did not go well. In her first attempt at the Channel on August 18, 1925, Trudy was disqualified when Wolf ordered another swimmer who was keeping her company in the water, Ishak Helmi, to recover her from the water. According to Trudy and other witnesses, she was not drowning, but resting, floating face down. Trudy bitterly disagreed with Wolf's decision. Wolf had commented that women may not be capable of swimming the channel and it was speculated that he did not want Ederly to succeed. Her successful channel swim, this time training with coach Bill Burgess who had successfully swum the channel in 1911 began approximately one year later at Cape Greenez in France at 7.08 on the morning of August 6, 1926. She came ashore at Kingsdown, Kent, 14 hours and 34 minutes later. Her record stood until Florence Chadwick swam the channel in 1950 in 13 hours and 20 minutes. Ederly used motorcycle goggles to protect her eyes from salty water, as did Burgess in 1911. However, while Burgess swam breaststroke, she used crawl, and therefore had her goggles sealed with paraffin to render them watertight. Gertrude possessed a contract from both the New York Daily News and Chicago Tribune when she attempted the channel swim a second time. The money she received paid her expenses and provided her with a modest salary. It also gave her a bonus in exchange for exclusive rights to her personal story. The Daily News and the Chicago Tribune got the jump on every other newspaper in America. Another American swimmer in France in 1926 to try and swim the channel was Lillian Cannon from Baltimore. She was also sponsored by a newspaper, the Baltimore Post, which tried to create a rivalry between her and Ederly in the weeks spent training off the French coast. In addition to Cannon, several other swimmers, including two other American women, Clarabel Barrett and Amelia Gade Corson, were training in England with the goal of becoming the first woman to swim the channel. Barrett and Cannon were unsuccessful but three weeks after Ederly's feet, Corson crossed in a time that was 50 minutes slower than Ederly. For her second attempt at the channel, Ederly had an entourage aboard the tug the Alsace on August 6, 1926, which included her father and one of her sisters, Meg, as well as Julia Hartman, wife of Westbrook Pegler and a writer for the New York Daily News, the paper that sponsored Ederly's swim. Hartman wouldn't allow reporters from other newspapers on the tug, in order to protect her scoop, and as a result a second tug was hired by the disgruntled reporters. On several occasions during the swim this tug the Morini, came in close to Ederly and nearly endangered her chances. The incident caused subsequent bitterness. It also led to accusations in the British press that the two tugs had in fact sheltered Ederly from the bad weather and thus made her swim easier. During her twelfth hour at sea, Burgess, her trainer, had become so concerned by unfavorable winds that he called to her, Jerdy, you must come out. The swimmer lifted her head from the choppy waters and replied, what for? Only five men had been able to swim the English Channel before Ederly. The best time had been 16 hours, 33 minutes by Enrique Tiribishi. Ederly walked up the beach at Kingsdown, England after 14 hours and 34 minutes. The first person to greet her was a British immigration officer who requested a passport from the bleary-eyed, waterlogged teenager. She was actually 20, not a teenager. When she successfully swam the Channel, when Ederly returned home, she was greeted with a ticker tape parade in Manhattan. More than two million people lined the streets of the parade route to cheer her. She made an arrangement with Edward L. Hyman to make a personal appearance at the Brooklyn Mark Strand, and she was paid an amount far greater than they had ever paid an individual performer prior. Subsequently, she went on to play herself in a movie Swim Girl, Swim starring B.B. Daniels and tour the vaudeville circuit, including later Billy Rose's Aquacade. She met President Coolidge and had a song and a dance step named for her. Her manager, Dudley Field Malone, was not able to capitalize on her notoriety, so Ederly's career in vaudeville wasn't a huge financial success. The Great Depression also diminished her financial rewards. A fall down the steps of her apartment building in 1933 twisted her spine and left her bedridden for several years, but she recovered well enough to appear at the 1939 New York World's Fair. Death She had poor hearing since childhood due to measles, and by the 1940s she was almost completely deaf. Aside from her time in vaudeville, Trudy taught swimming to deaf children. She never married and she was living in an old people's home in 2001. 
She died on November 30, 2003, in Wyckoff, New Jersey, at the age of 98. She was interred in the Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York City. Topic: <laughs> Legacy. Ederly was inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame as an honor swimmer in 1965. She was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 2003. She is mentioned in episode 11 of the first season of Barney Miller by the Birdman character Roland Gussick, as being one who lived her dreams, and did not allow them to be stopped. An annual swim from New York City's Battery Park to Sandy Hook, New Jersey is called the Ederly Swim in memory of Gertrude Ederly, and follows the course she swam. The Gertrude Ederly Recreation Center is located in Manhattan, a BBC Radio 4 play, The Great Swim, by Anita Sullivan, based on the 2008 book of the same name by Gavin Mortimer, was first broadcast on September 1, 2010, and repeated on January 23, 2012. It dramatizes Ederly's record-breaking crossing of the English Channel, her name makes a cameo appearance in Disney's The Princess and the Frog in a newspaper article being read by character Eli, Big Daddy, La Bouffe. A film adaptation, Young Woman and the Sea, based on the book of the same name by Glenn Stout, produced by Jerry Bruckheimer with a screenplay by Jeff Nathanson, was set up at Paramount Pictures in 2015 and remains in development. See also List of female adventurers List of Olympic medalists in swimming women. World record progression 100m freestyle World record progression 200m freestyle World record progression 400m freestyle World record progression 800m freestyle World record progression 4 times 100 meters freestyle relay broke the record set by all men before her. <laughs>